Hello? <laughs> I'm sorry it still says sewing part one on there, but that is the back view of my jeans. And I replaced that image, but um, I guess all this monkeying around didn't get rid of it this time. So hello, hello, hello. How's it going? Boy, you guys, I don't want to be an expert in this stuff. And I am not an expert in this stuff, obviously. Yeah, it's so weird because I was trying to fix that other issue I keep having with Twitch. And so I actually looked it up and it is a known issue. And so it told me um, Twitch is acting up now. Yeah, see. So it told me I needed to log out of Streamlabs, my encoder, and log back in again. And... Um, so when I went live today, it went live on on Twitch, but now it's not. Hi, you guys. Thanks for being patient. There's a lot of you here. Beverly, Louise, Megan, Sarah, Terry, Rachel. It's good to see you guys. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Laura. It's great to see you guys. I'm really glad I got that to work because I'm kind of eager to sew these. So. so everything else looks okay. Your pocket came alive with my voice. <laughs> That was really weird. Yeah, I don't see anything on Twitch. I'm gonna refresh the screen and see. Yeah, I'm not on there. I did it on YouTube, but um, yeah. So, what do you mean what? Not gonna make these. <laughs> um, so, hi Ryan, yay. I'm so glad. Welcome, welcome. I had a lot of technical difficulties today. I definitely, I can sew pretty good. Um, the video thing, not my jam. So I'm working on it. Um, anyway, anyway. So let's see. So um, we have a lot of ground to cover today. So I sewed one of my pockets because I wanted to do a fun detail as a surprise for hearts because hearts fabric gave us all this you know, these materials to make the jeans and it's almost Valentine's Day, so I thought it'd be a fun detail. So I've been putting their their heart on the back. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do the other one because I wanted to do this as a trial, but I'm pulling my little threads to the back right now. So I don't have to backstitch. You know how I am about backstitches. Oh, cool, Laura. Um, Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll do rivets at the end. The, I think the biggest hurdle with rivets is confidence <laughs> because it's so scary to initially like make that tap, you know? Where's this thread at? Where's this thread one right here? So I, I'm, no, I'm no genie when it comes to doing this kind of like fun stitch detail, but um, I've been playing around with it. You know, I played around with it on the wallet, you know, so. Okay, here's this one. Am I even on the right heart? Yeah, I am on the right heart. Where's this one? It's right there. See, it's kind of hard to like get in there and pull it when I first start. I think this might be it. Is this it? I doubt it. Maybe I'll make it real, there it is. Yeah. I hope that's it. That's it, yay. Okay, there we go. I put a little fabric back there to stabilize it because the denim is so stretchy and it's still, look at that, it's still kind of wrinkly. Can you see that? But maybe when I iron it, I can kind of beat it into submission. So, all right, so this is what I was doing. You know, it's like I spent all this time doing this before the stream, but it would have been nice to know I was gonna have stream issues so I could have fixed those before I started, but you don't know those issues are gonna happen until you start. It's so annoying. And I think like, for me, I have a pretty high tolerance when streamers are having issues because I know, because um, I've, I've watched enough streams to know that that just happens and you just wait, you know? But I know for folks that are just like, I don't get this live thing, you know? It looks like I probably went live like six times, so. <laughs> All right, so there's one. Oh, and I wanted to show you, I forgot to show you the other day. So I ordered, the Spoonflower had a um, special promoting their new Pippa, oh no, I'm sorry, not Pippa, Petal Cotton. It's not very new, it's newish, but they're promoting it as a possible fabric for clothing. Um, and so I was like, well, I wanna know about that. And so, um, and you guys know I like Spoonflower a lot and I use a lot of their fabrics. So I took it, took it up on the offer and I bought, looks like I bought a yard. And um, 
and this design was called Pippa. That's where I got that from. So I got it and I have to say, I, it's pretty boardy. I haven't washed it. Um, the print quality is pretty nice. I can't tell if it's the, the design or the fabric, but it does look a little bit, um, sorry, it's really, I have the camera up high with the brightness, so um, it's uh, a little washed out on the camera. It does look a little pixelated, but I think that might be the design and the way it's supposed to put the colors together, so. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that I did get it, and um, it's the um, Petal Signature Cotton. And it's okay. It's pretty thick, though. It feels like um, a stiffer Kona cotton. I, I, You guys, I'm not like the expert in all these things, but that's my... <laughs> That's my assessment. I think on the bias, it'll be nice. It's kind of boardy. I got it and I was like, well, I'll just get enough to make like a willow tank or something like that, a tank top of some sort. And um, I don't think I'd wear that as a tank top, but a skirt, like a lightweight skirt would be really cute. So bottoms, I would consider lightweight bottoms. Probably not pants unless they were lightweight, not too fitted, no stretch, so, so yeah. Oh, really, Terry? That's good to know. That's good to know. So maybe it's something, I don't know. Anyway, let's carry on. All right, so we already did our fronts here. We have our pocket. These are the saffron jeans by Deer and Doe. Um, and we did our zipper fly, which the, the instructions are a little confusing um, in the Deer and Doe. I don't feel like I'm being mean by saying that. Everyone says that. <laughs> And they are a little confusing, but I really love, this is my favorite fly by the way it looks of all the zipper flies I've sewn. So I've done the Jutland pants, which are men's. I've done the Ash jeans, the Ginger jeans, and now these. These, look at how far back the zipper sets. I really like that because I feel like my, my zipper is always like right here on the edge and then it pokes out. And say this gets kind of wrinkly like this in the wash and it does that, you know? So anyway. <clears throat> um, this cute little pocket fabric. So the fronts are done. We did those. We actually took our time, but they were pretty quick. If I wouldn't have been taking my time and kind of noodling on how to how that zipper gets sewn together, because I didn't do a practice before I started with you guys, it would have been a lot faster. So, um, but today we're doing a lot. Like the back, you only have the back pockets. There's no back yoke. Um, but then after that, we have the. Um, Where's my other pocket? Oh, you, we have the, we have to sew the pants together. And I think I'll do a flat felt seam on the crotch. Right, mate, Rachel? Exactly. Exactly, yeah. And then um, we're going to put the waistband on and then we're going to do our hardware. So I really want to get through all the way. So this will be a little bit longer today. So, all right. And I added to it by doing this little pocket detail. So what I did, um, this is not like, um, you know, this isn't the way you're supposed to do this. I just thought I would try this. So I just put a little piece of the woven in here behind the stretchy pocket. And I actually made it a little smaller so that it doesn't make the pocket, pocket too bulky because I was a little worried that if I put it all the way to the edges, plus, you know, like when you fold back two layers like this, you know, it starts peeking out and it starts getting misaligned. And I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and set myself up for success. Right, so I'm gonna iron this. I had to reset up the um, iron cam, so I'm hoping it's still there. So we'll see. Yay, it's there. Let me iron this. And let's iron my other one now. Let's see if, um, isn't that just triggering when the camera is a little kooky? There we go. Yeah, I don't know. I'm making it worse. It's like counter to my other counters, my camera, the way the direction is. All right, I'm just gonna stop fiddling with it. <laughs> all right. I don't really need all these pins anymore because um, now the hearts are stitched through. So this is the other thing I did was, um, I actually left cream as the bobbin and I think I was telling myself, I rationalized it going, oh, well, it looks good on the pocket. No one's ever going to see it, but at least it looks better than navy blue. 
Um, if you do this, I would do the bobbin this color or your thread color because you can kind of see little bits of white and the white isn't actually white, the cream bobbin. It's actually tinted blue and I think it's because of the, the dye of the jeans. So the heart design, because they're for hearts fabric and it's almost Valentine's Day. And I thought they appreciate corny. They're okay with corny over there. You know, so why not get a little corny? That looks a little better. It kind of mashed down the wrinkles there. So, all right, so let's just try and get this on as straight as possible. Maybe I'll send him a, a box of chocolates. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really, Louise? Oh, cool. What kind? What shirt did they use? I think I follow Ray Stitch. This fabric's really cute. It's kind of kitschy. It's so Melody Miller, the designer. I don't follow all the a lot of designers and stuff, but definitely I've seen her for so long that it definitely feels like I would guess it if I had to guess it was hers. All right, so um, I really want to throw that pin away. That's why it's sitting there. <laughs> it's bent. I'm put leave it there so I don't accidentally use it. So I'm just gonna pin all this so that all the layers are stable like that. Let's pin, let's iron this down. I don't think I'm sewing this pocket the way the instructions have you do it, just so you know. I'm pretty sure Dear Doe likes to um, do the technique where you fold it down like this, sew your ends, and then pop out your corners. So, just so you know, you can do it that way. I feel like I'm better at tucking in all my little um, goodies um, with this method. But let's see, am I symmetrical? It doesn't look symmetrical, does it? Not really. What I don't like about that is that like to make it symmetrical, now this is gonna be wider here and I have to remember to stitch a straight line. <laughs> and you know, I don't know if I'll remember that. Let's hope so. Okay, so this one's ready. How about I just do this one now too. Oh, okay, okay. Lisa Lynn Company. Okay, cool, Louise, thanks. Thanks for telling me I follow her. That's helpful. Okay. Let's see, how are they comparing? Look at how good I am, because you guys are watching me. I have to be so good. Oh, this isn't, this isn't the same pocket at all. <laughs> Poke it in a little bit more. They'll be looking at the hearts, right? Not if they're symmetrical. I'm gonna throw that away. I didn't forget you. <laughs> yeah, these are that's who the jeans are for, Megan. They gave us this project, so. Okay, so. I didn't like do anything too groundbreaking with my heart design. I just took their logo and enlarged it and then um, put it on there, you know? So. Let's go. Here we go. Let's do some more. I've been starting kind of in the middle here so that I don't have the at the point because I think that could be troublesome. Um, the first time I did this, I actually pinned it down and it was a good idea. Uh, but I also caught the paper pattern a lot. Well, that wasn't a good idea. It was kind of hard to get it off. But this is a lot easier for me to continuously stitch without stopping is if I pin it down like this. I'm actually getting it right now. I'm going to pull this to the back. So I'm just doing this because I learned when I stitched those little houses on my wallet that um, I just pull it to the back and it's fine. So well, the other reason uh, like I, I turned all these corners back was just because I felt like 
you know, it's good to know, kind of know the limits of your, your palette, so to speak, and um, know where you need to stay inside of, and that kind of helps. Plus, like I can stitch all the way through, you know, almost up to the edges. Maybe not like here. See, I did this one too high. Oh, I actually go through it here. So I'm gonna have to stitch through the heart, unless maybe I fold this under like this. So we'll look at it and see what we think. Cause I could do this and then I would stay out of the way of the heart up there, you know? So, I mean, the other thing you could do is hand stitch this to the pocket, but we know how I feel about that. <laughs> I hope Hearts likes this and they're not like, shoot, we made those for a customer. <laughs> they don't want Hearts on their butt. <laughs> All right. That pin is a little close. So, yeah, I don't have really any groundbreaking stat strategies with this. I just stitch around and around. Um, when I did this with my wallet and I had those little houses, a lot of those threads were quilting weight. It looked way better no, you know and, and also um, there were such small distances it was easy to just like stitch 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 over and over and over and it wasn't so cumbersome you know there's some really pe amazing people out there that do this kind of stitching really detailed drawings and stuff it's really cool I'm glad they get to do that, and I don't have to. <laughs> I kind of smooth out my little curves, like that one. See, I keep getting a little bit off, but I just smooth it out. All right, I don't know how many times they're going around, but I think that one more time should do it. It'll look like the other one. want to really get outside the lines because then I'd have to go back around to smooth it out. Oof. That was close. All right. Let's pull this right meow. There we go. And so I just kind of tug my bobbin thread and then it pulls the uh, the pink thread to the back like that. And then it's done. And you can tie them off if you want, if you're doing this. We did this with the lightning bolt. No, I'm not Louie's. I'm just using regular old sewing thread. Sometimes you gotta use the color that you have on hand, right? Um, and I don't think I have a pink. I didn't even... Yeah, I don't think I have a pink. Now you're making me think maybe I should have looked. I didn't even think about that. All right, so maybe right there so that they're obviously different, you know? That way there's no pressure. <laughs> okay, so I didn't stitch, I didn't pin this little heart down and it was a little tricky. Then we'll get into sewing these. Aren't you glad I already did one of these so you don't have to suffer through the other? <laughs> I'm gonna pull my thread to the back here like that. Push it into the heart so that maybe it'll stay out of the way. Let's hope. It's kind of nice having your presser foot on the paper. It sort of guides it and wants to stay on there. It's just because of all these um, turns that it kind of gets a little bit off, you know? It doesn't want to stay perfect. All right, so I stitched on the paper, and you're going to see it's going to pull my stitches a little bit. I used cardstock, though, so maybe maybe using something like like a vellum. I just wasn't sure. Like, can I, I mean, of course I can stitch through the vellum, right? That's what I did with the, the quilt. Remember when I learned how to do the my quilt? So maybe next time I would stitch through on the vellum. I'm a pro now. Watch me run out of bobbin. <laughs> I cry a little. <laughs> I ran out of 
bobbin. I'd be like, oh, great. I'm gonna move my chat window up a little bit. I'm so paranoid I'm gonna lose you guys today now because of all that. There we go. Right there. So Megan, are you trying to tell me you wouldn't wear jeans with hearts on the butt? This is so 80s to me. Like I picture a girl with like bubble gum. I think these will look really cute on Lexi. That's the one I pulled. This is, wait, where's, where's my thread? Oh, it's this one right here. That's funny. I don't know why I was pulling the pink one thinking it would be the pink one on the outside. Nope. <laughs> me either. <laughs> but you guys made me put lightning bolts on the back of my jeans and I forget they're there. And then I'll see a picture of the back view of like a garment I'm wearing. And this is my face. I have lightning bolts on my butt and my chat made me do it. Okay. Here we go. Um, I'm just going to press this really quick, not move the camera. Just so it gets nice and flat, flat, flat. All right, those are pretty cute. Maybe when you were seven. <laughs> yep. All right, so let's um, move the hardware, move the thread, let's change over to navy. So tomorrow I'm going to kind of copy this little dog coat that someone gave Loki because um, I know it fits him. I actually had to put some belly extenders on that thing and a neck extender because you know he has no neck. Um, and then um, and then I think I'm going to use this quilting technique to make the fabric from the scraps that I have. I think it'll be kind of interesting and it won't take long because it's such a small item. I'm hoping, you know, I think it'll be a nice technique. And then I'll have a couple more washable uh, coats for him. I should be doing this every time I change my bobbin, but I've been slacking a little bit lately. That's not good. Cause I cannot get those uh, screws undone. So, and I know I, I, I need, usually I would clean out from under my throat plate and I can't get them undone, so. Oh yeah, Louise, I wore those yesterday. I forget about that too. And it, like, I actually don't mind the lightning bolts. The funny thing is, I ended up wearing those at my husband's Christmas party because I wanted to wear pants. I didn't want to go like full fancy because it was like, we were only gonna be there for like maybe two hours and it was gonna be kind of low key. And they're essentially kind of like an outdoor company, so it's not really like that kind of thing. But some people get really dressed up. It's really cool. And I just am like, I didn't wear makeup. <laughs> I was just pretty casual about it. And um, I wanted to wear a, this, like, I have this really nice beaded sweater um, that's really bright. It's like really fun colors. It's very, it's very Scandinavian looking almost, kind of. And, um, oh, right, Megan, exactly. Yeah, oh, good, Derek. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I was like, yeah, this, my new, my chat was right. I, black jeans are the way to go, and I would get use out of them, and I did. Like, that was really great. I was really thankful. And then as I looked at myself in the back view of the mirror, like, seeing how everything looked, I was like, oh, my God, I have lightning bolts on my butt, and I'm going to this my husband's Christmas party. And I was like, F it. <laughs> nice win. But, you know, that was one of those moments where I was like, yeah, you guys. Sometimes, you know, I got to have some sort of 
<laughs> something that's nice and I'm not like that. So I need to work on that. So <laughs> really, Megan, that's pretty funny. They got out of school because they are they having like a big parade or something. All right. So what do you, okay. Now I've already stitched through this by accident. So do I just, you know, actually too bad this one didn't get caught because really I could have just stitched around the sides and just, and just skipped and just skipped that seam. You know, I think actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch up high. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna stitch up high. All right. I'm gonna do a half inch uh, stitch line. So I'm gonna make sure that little thing goes under there. I'm doing the pocket kind of in a different order than I normally would. I'm more interested in this line being parallel to that edge too, you know, but normally I would, I would stitch at the bottom of my serging there and I pre-serged all my pieces today. So <laughs> yeah, Sarah, I mean, right. You can put them anywhere you want, you know, um, I think the closest like first time I ever did a decorated pocket was when I was dating my husband. We've been together like his birthday was in is at the end of July and we met around the, my birthday beginning of May. So we were had only been dating a few months because we didn't start dating right off the bat, you know, like maybe. Oh, I kind of got off there, didn't I? And to see the stretch fabric, man, it's so gushy. I'm going to fix this right here. You probably can see. So um, I ended up like, what do you get your boyfriend you've only been seeing for a little bit? So I actually made him a shirt, like a button down shirt. It was kind of my thing at the time. Like I was kind of into making button down shirts and I used silk ribbon embroidery. That was the other thing I was kind of like my hobby at the time. Like I was terrible at it, but I really loved it. It was really fun, really satisfying. You can cover a lot of ground in a few stitches because of the silk ribbon. And I stitched a heart like on his behind on the shirt behind the chest pocket so no one could see it and it took him a little bit to notice it so that was my first decorated pocket and I also did the back of his collar stand on the inside of his shirt he still has that shirt I should get it out sometime <laughs> so oh right Megan I know he's a ham he, he, he loves attention I'm gonna kind of just push this in here and try and get it a little better than I just did. I don't really like putting back tacks right there, but at the same time, um, the navy blue kind of hides it. I see, I see a couple chats just so I can all catch up. So. <laughs> Megan, that's awesome. Oh, I still did it again. Yeah, don't stitch your pockets in this order. Right, right, Sarah. Exactly. Okay, so here's my backs. We'll see if I can correct it when I, when I stitch down that seam. I'll tuck it in there the best I can. All right, so I could do it out or I could do it in. I feel like this makes your butt look rounder. What do you guys think? <sighs> This is one thing um, my real father taught me with art. Uh, when I was trying to frame something, I had a series. I had three pictures of a dog that someone hand, hand drew of my dog. They were colored pencil and they were really great. Um, I actually don't talk with my dad um, <laughs> at all, but um, one of the things he taught me when I was trying to figure out how to frame the order of these three prints was he's like, why do they have to be like this, like facing each other? You know, um, try rearranging it. So the one in the middle was the dog straight on and then the other two, he was facing a certain direction. And, I've, and it really did make a big difference in the picture frame, you know, like it wasn't the expected thing and you actually looked at each picture. So it was a really good tip, you know? So you like inward, so not like this. Oof, the camera, man. Really, Regan? I feel like this is the seven-year-old. 
This is the 37 year old. <laughs> what do you guys think? Outward like this or, or inward? Oof on this, on this coloring. I'm gonna brighten it up just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, you guys are gonna disagree, aren't you? Did that make any difference? Okay, so two inwards, three inwards, three outwards. I hope there's more than six viewers right now. Tiebreakers, please. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five outwards. Six outwards, thanks guys. All right, we're gonna do that outwards. All right, so like this. I'm the breaker. <laughs> Hearts aren't the same you want, but look smaller, not bigger. Outward, outward. All right, I'm calling it. All right. I don't get to keep them, so, you know, I don't mind either way. <laughs> 32. <laughs> okay. I'm still gonna start upside down and kind of go up at an angle. So I'm gonna start at the point here, go up to the top, towards in, across to the outside, and then go around and do the same on the other side. That's my plan. It's already ironed, which is nice, but I'll just pin it in a couple places because the this this denim's really stretchy. It's very lightweight, so maybe this will help from it getting pushed like this, you know. So cool, cool. All right, we're doing outward. I I like that too. So we're we're gonna do it. I really want to sew them on with pink. <laughs> But we didn't do the rest of the top stitching in pink, but you know, if I had thought of this sooner, that would have been really cute. Someone would like that. I know it's not for me or Megan, but it's fun to do. It's fun to do these kinds of things and get the chance to do it, um, even if you're not gonna wear it, you know? Because there's a lot of like techniques I would like to try, but I'm like, oh, I'd never wear that, you know? I'm really glad I put that fabric behind the pocket. I'm just tucking that in a little better. Really don't want it to sneak out. There we go. That did the trick. Two stitches there. It's so dark. My all's in the way. All right, get rid of the pin. And it doesn't feel rough, which is nice. Cause you know, sometimes that stitching really makes it kind of rough. So. <laughs> I didn't throw you under the bus, Megan. And I wasn't calling you 37. I'm sorry, if that's what you thought. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being 37, by the way. Okay. I like sparring with you, Megan. You can take it. Um, I see right here that this is going in a little bit, and I think it's because it got stitched right there. Can you see that? So let's just kind of pull this a little bit. See if I can start training it to kind of even out. You see my hands are getting blue. <laughs> All right, 
So that's a pretty big swoop in there. So I'm gonna try and counter it by pulling this in up here. And then I'm gonna pull this my all. Try and correct it a little bit. I don't really want it to stretch it too much because then it'll just pull the jeans right there. <laughs> Megan, well you said I threw you on there, but I thought you meant, I thought you were thinking I was calling you 37. I'm lost too. <laughs> Louise. I, yeah, I don't know if I wish I was at all. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think what I was doing when I was 37. I was back in Humboldt, so I would like that. All right, let's trim these little threads here. Hi, Sydney, how's it going? Sydney, thanks for the Patreon patronage. I just saw that, that's nice of you. I had a couple of people, I, meant to, I keep meaning to thank them. I really appreciate that, thanks. <laughs> All right, these look cute. They look cute. All right, so let's do our center back seam here. So I um, I watched one of the the latest video by Tomcat Stitchery by Whitney, where she was making the pencil skirt. I don't know who, if any of you are doing that. I know you're work doing the whole um, great module so along that she's I think co-hosting co-hosting with someone. Um, I'm new. I knew I didn't know she did videos. I followed her on Instagram, but I didn't know she did videos. So. Um, so it was really fun watching another person do sewing videos. Her setup is so different and, um, you know, she's got that cool gravity feed iron, which was fun to see and play. So I haven't used one of those in forever. So that was, that was really cool. All right, I wanna look and see which way the, I pressed the seam here. Well, I actually know which way I pressed, so I'm just gonna make it very obvious. And so my, center front uh, rise is stitched um, on this side so on the left front now I could keep it the same way or I could counter it so that the seam juncture down here is going the other way which is probably what I'm gonna do because I like less bulk down here at that juncture so but if you were following the directions you would be doing the fly after this step so once once you have your inseam sewn, I think, together, then you would do this whole long stitch to the dot, the um, mark below the fly. So we did this a little out, out of order just so that we didn't have to um, fiddle around with the entire pair of pants while we were sewing the fly. So that's why you're seeing it in this order now. I kind of want to do a double stitch, but they're pretty stretchy. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. That's awesome, Terry. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> oh, Megan. What do you say about me when I'm not here? <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I've i seen Petersham ribbon for years. I've sold it in fabric stores, and I don't know why, but I had no clue. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's a little pull. Oh, I can get it back in there. Spandex, by the way. Those are little th cut threads, but do you see that little bit right there? Hi, Sherry, how's it going? Yeah, I think um, the way uh, she sews, I mean, in a way it's so great, right? Because she fast forwards it so quickly that um, you don't have to sit there and listen to her talk about what her pug ate for breakfast, <laughs> which you might hear from me, so. I mean, that's the difference between live. All right, so actually, I since I surged it, I don't know if I really wanna do flat felt or not. And if I did, I'd do wrong sides together. I kind of want to do the flat felled seam. 
you know? And it's usually the back over the front, right? Like that. But it was fun. Yeah, it was just fun seeing like that whole skirt just come together. I mean, it wasn't from start to finish, but you know. I just don't want to spend a ton of time editing videos. It's so much work. All right, so I'm going to sew this at the 5 8 inch seam. I'm be a little generous. Now we have those notches. Remember how I left the, that notch somewhere about here? I think that's it right there. Only because I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any easing happening between the knees of um, an, around the right, the inseam going through the rise. Because sometimes you do ease it like you do on the gingers and I think on the ash sheens as well. It, the, that easing is pretty important because it does help with your denim not torquing, in my opinion. I don't actually know what the official reason for it, but I've accidentally left it off before and my jeans torqued. So these do look a little bit like you do ease it in there because see how different they are. So you're going to get it to that notch, which I think is, is that it? I feel like it's a little lower. Um, that's the problem with surging, right? It's usually about the knee. So I think it's about right here. Oh yeah, I think that's it right there. And then you, you ease between each knee on, on either leg. And then that way, um, what it does is it just kind of keeps the lower part of your leg true and on grain. And then you're only easing in between the section here because it's the, when you don't cut your jeans on grain, that's when you sometimes get that, your seams on your legs kind of rotating around your leg. Have you ever had that happen? Like cheap denim will happen, or maybe you'll have it like fine on one leg and not on the other. So <laughs> next in fashion, I don't know that one. Um, no, Ryan, they're really high waisted. I know, right, Ryan? I know that's exactly what I was kind of suspicious of that. So we'll see. I'm kind of hoping that these don't fit me. But yeah, there is no back yoke um, and they are stretchy, but yeah, I have definitely, I have opinions on jeans that don't have side seams or yokes. You need shaping somewhere, especially if they're high waisted. If they're low waisted, I don't know. It's, it's uh, maybe just depends on what your shape is, right? Some People are straight, some people are hourglass. I'm very, I'm very curvy. Even if I was really skinny, I'd be really curvy. So, right, Terry? Exactly. Oh, I'm gonna look at, so what's it about? Is it like a voting off type of thing? Like a Project Runway? Is it all about fashion? Cause I have to say, I'm not, I'm not that into fashion. I like fashion rather than fat, I should say. I feel like my seam allowance just changed a little bit. All right, so let's get this to this point where that other notch is right there. I'm just gonna pin that so I, I see it. And then I'm gonna ease this in here. My pin cushion is really far away. Uh, you typically wouldn't overlock your seams if you're going to flat fell, by the way. But this, these jeans were getting kind of shreddy, <clears throat> especially on the vertical seams. So I kind of was like, you know, I'm just gonna do it anyway. I'm about to um, cut the surging off on one of them though. Yeah, right, Louise? Yeah. Oh, really, Ryan? That's fun. They have um, a top waistline. Uh, what do you mean, Megan? Like a waistline at the top or a waistline that would look good with tops? I don't know what that means.
One thing I have learned is if you're gonna do a flat fold seam, do it first, don't do it later. All right, so I'm gonna trim this one here because this is the one I'm going to sew over. I'm just gonna trim it down to about a quarter. I kinda I gotta make sure I give enough room to cover up the surging on the other side so it can fold completely over. I kinda limited myself. Oops, that's a little close. I'm gonna check that out. I haven't been watching much the last few days. My favorite video game is coming out with a part two in May and it's really eagerly anticipated. It's called The Last of Us. And uh, the actors who played it, who played the characters in the video game are playing it through one hour a week. So I've been watching that. It's really great. It's fun. They're terrible at the game, which is funny and really frustrating for other people. <laughs> and then, um, hmm. Yeah, I haven't really been watching a lot of TV. <laughs> yeah, me too, Sydney. Okay. So now uh, we have the seam ready, so I'm just going to fold this over and stitch it down. And between, because of the surging, because I trimmed that seam allowance, it's actually going to be really easy. It really wants to do it. I don't know if you can see how easy that is. So, Oh, cool, Sherry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is one, and it's called um, Grading Patterns. And in the cover of the video, if you go on my website, it'll be easier to find. It'll be like how to grade. You can you put it in the search bar. And the website's so so dot live, and and then you can go and you'll see, and there's a link to the directly to the video and what I cover. The cover of the video looks like a bunch of different dresses, like in ascending size order, and each one's a different color, so it looks like a rainbow. So that'll help you kind of grab it. It'll grab your attention. Kind of pulling the bottom layer so it's nice and flat on the back side. The machines in the industry do this a whole seam in one stitch. One, one go. Because if you want to alter your jeans, you're not going to do it at the inseam on a pair of jeans that are already done. You do it at the outseam. So, in a way, you're not really like closing any doors by doing this. Um, you're not gonna really, if you needed to do adjustments because of this area, you would have had to do it in a muslin. Um, yeah, but the flat felt also on the inseam is nice and flat. It's, it's a lower profile seam. It's more comfortable and it will um, hold up longer because you know everybody's legs rub together and that will abrade the stitches and then the stitches start coming out. We've all seen it, right? So this kind of helps that. And I'm going from the back to the front. And I don't do that for any rhyme or reason except that's how I see it done. I've never really researched it. Does anyone know, is the is the Great British Sewing Bee on um, Acorn? Does, does anyone have Acorn here? I have Acorn. <laughs> but I haven't really been utilizing it in, for the last year. So I'm kind of curious if it's there. I don't know what that Brit box is, but... Um, 
Acorn always solves all of that for me. I don't know if they're how different they are. The other nice thing about the flat belt seam is really how nice it looks on the inside. You know, it's so smooth, you know? Got a little wiggly there. I wanted to see how my rise came out. Oh, I got my seam allowance pushed back. Do I fix that? Yeah, I fixed that. I know it should be. It will be on, on BritBox, okay. Wait, so I'm scared to ask Terry, what does that do? <laughs> Hi, Jan. Right, Jan, I know. <laughs> BritBox is BBC and ITV archive. So be, meaning it's older stuff. Because um, Acorn's new, newer stuff. Like there's actually things added every week. And Acorn's really affordable, in my opinion. It's something like $60 a year, like five bucks a month. If you if that's all you like, like I definitely go through phases where all I watch is British stuff. I like the mysteries. I like <clears throat> a lot of it, the dramas. Um, it's a good, like, if that's all I'm paying for, it's great. Oh, it is, oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. My friends um, are really big fans of MasterChef Australia. They think it's the best of all the MasterChefs and they're really into cooking. But I think they use, um, yeah, like a, the, a VPN or a torrent type thing. So they're not doing it legally. <laughs> you know, it's the only way they can get it. But they love it because it's very low drama. Um, it's very productive. Um, they did. That's their favorite one. Okay, so I'm just making sure I got all my stitches out that I had, yeah, there we go. That feels better. I'm just gonna stitch that back down and make sure this time that, that my, it's kind of funny that it folded back on itself since it points this way and I'm stitching this way, so. Oh, I was stitching the other way though. That's why, okay, that makes sense. Because my thread is dark and it blends in, I will do this. You know if it were top stitch thread, I would have been like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. You got Apple TV for free with your iPad? What? Do I have that? Or was that a, um, cause you just got your iPad, Megan. Was that a like special for you? Because I really want to watch, um, a, there's a movie I want to watch. Oh, I really want to watch the Picard series and that's not on there. All right, that looks better, huh? I hate cutting these little things because I feel like they just come right back. Like it just keeps coming, you know? You know what, I'm gonna tie these two together. Oh, I missed. Every time I cut these, I like two days later, they're back. So I feel like it's just getting like, I'm losing threads now, you know? So I might as well, let's see if I can prevent it. I feel like I'm knitting with um, indigo dyed yarn right now because my hands are blue. Okay. Okay, so now let's do our out seam. <laughs> you guys are really um, good. You're good sleuths. No, Louise, it's a it's a CBS only show. <gasps> Is their first episode? Are you talking about Picard, Sydney? Is it on? 
Is it on YouTube? I don't want to get hooked though. You know? I'm going to do this a little bit like more like a half inch seam. Uh, only because I, I used probably a little bit than the 5 8 on the inseam here. It's kind of a cheap way to deal with that. I, I agree. So, but because the thing is like when you're uh, dealing with your seam allowance on jeans, you have to remember that up here above the crotch line, you're dealing with the circumference of the pants. Down here, you're dealing with the circumference of the legs. Totally different things. So you got to be careful when you start monkeying around with things like that. I never checked the inseam on these. Are these, um, are these, I don't even know how these pants fit. Are they tight? Yeah, they look like they're, they're, oh yeah, they're tight. Of course I know. We saw, I've been calling them saucy. <laughs> I knew it. I heard it. Yes, I did, Sherry. I did wash them. Yeah, but I'm usually um, washing them with other things. Really, Malin? Hi, Malin. I saw you earlier. Yeah, I, I I definitely watched Star Trek as a kid. My cousins um, loved it. I had three boy cousins, and they always made me watch it. So I didn't like watching it only because they made me watch it, you know? And I, I just didn't really understand it. I was kind of young. and um, But when I got older and Next Generation came out, I had friends, and, and we watched it together. And I really loved that series. It was so good. And it's funny now because I'm such a, a big um, fan of uh, Big Bang Theory. You know, with Will Wheaton on there and all the references. It's really fun. There's no time like now to um, turn all of the... Th trees into sawdust right outside my door. <laughs> so I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> all the, all the, all their things that they've been picking, I don't know, they're not trees, don't think, don't worry, they're not trees, they're, some, they're turning something into sawdust out there. That's what it sounds like. I want that to be invisible. No one must know I ran out of Bob in there. I'm just teasing. <laughs> you hate Star Trek, my kid. <laughs> See, I, um, yeah, like the first ones were just so campy and corny and weird. And now they're kind of like, it's a, it's a, it's got a fond place in my heart, you know? But, um, the, I love Next Generation. I loved all the, it's like all the adventures they came upon and all the different things that they addressed. And I'm sure now if I watched it, I'd be like, oh boy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a really big Big Bang Theory. I just, the, the my friend here in Chico, the one that I've been walking with, I, I was, she's always looking for things to watch. And I was like, well, you watch Big Bang Theory, right? And so, um, she was like, no, I don't think I'm nerdy enough for that. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. You just spent 20 minutes talking about how much you like the second Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> and she was like, that doesn't count really. And I was like, yeah, it does. And then she, every time we talk, she brings up things. And I was like, dude, and I, I actually have the first season on disc. Cricket gave it to me as a gift for like Mother's Day. I was like, here you go. And she texted me, she goes, okay, I really love that show. And I was like, yeah. And then um, by the end of it, she goes, all right, I am definitely nerdier than I realized. I was like, we all are. We all know this stuff. 
It's funny. It's pop culture. You know? I like Voyager 2. I feel like that didn't get as good of a thing. Deep Space Nine was pretty good. It got a little weird sometimes. It was a little too campy. But I feel like if maybe maybe the original folks really like that, the original Star Trek folks. I don't know. I don't I don't go on forums. I don't I don't know anybody to talk to about these things. I'm not an expert. Okay, so now we have our pants sewn together. So I'm gonna sew the I'm gonna leave those. I'm gonna sew the side seam here. Um, I'm just going to top stitch the side seam towards the back and I'm going to go to the bottom of where the pocket is sewn into the pants. So about right here. This kind of reinforces this side seam. It also makes it sit smooth and flush against your body a little bit, a little bit better. And if you're putting stuff in your pocket, it'll um, help with that pocket opening, not getting too much stress. I'm sure there's other reasons that are actual real reasons, but those are my reasons. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Just pushing it apart, push the seam allowances towards the back. If you're doing top stitch thread, um, you know, you really gotta be strategic on when you're using the top stitch thread and when you're not. Like I wouldn't have done it to sew the seam together. I would just do it on these little areas that are showing to the outside. You don't even have to do it on the inseam if, inseam if you don't want to, um, if, even if you do the flat fell seam. You'll notice denim, where, peop, where companies choose to top stitch and where they don't is not consistent. So you can do whatever you want. It's coming, Megan. Oh yeah, I'm Babylon 5. Yeah, that for me is what it was. That's exactly it, Sydney. And it's okay to be nerdy, yeah. I don't like the drama junk either. I don't like love stories at all. And um, there are exceptions, but I just don't, I do like, I like sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, you like YA adults. I mean, YA books, um, you're gonna love the series. And it's like too teen angsty drama sometimes for me. That being said, I did read all the Twilight books, but oh boy, some of them were so hard. They could have cut out two whole books. All right, I'm gonna iron the interfacing on here. My machine's all, yeah. <laughs> I think the exception of a romance, there, I don't wanna call it romance, but there is a love story. The exception for me is any book by Rainbow Rowell. Have any of you read any of her books? She wrote Eleanor and Park. They're YA, but they are, incredible and um they're the only books when there's a love story i don't mind they're she's they're just really good i really like it okay so we have back waistband with interfacing and without right here um the thing i forgot to cut on camera with you guys um was the um belt loops. So I took the pattern piece and I just made one long strip of them. So that's what that is right there. Now we have a left front and a right front. Oh look, I already have it out. Perfect. Left front and a right front. I hope this is the right one. And um, Hearts gave me interfacing that is stretchy. It's 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 very stretchy, see. Which I don't know, maybe on this waistband that I don't know. Right, Sydney? Yeah, that's so true because I don't often do bar tacking. I'll just stitch it back and forth. <laughs> And I was giving, I was telling folks like, okay, if you followed me down this path um, on sewing the fronts um, and you didn't top stitch the pockets here, or you did when I did, and now you're like, great lady, I was using nice top stitching thread and you want me to take this out. I had to give tips like, okay, this is what I would do. I would hide the back stack tack here and then put a bar tack over it. <laughs> I'm 
just going to get it all down so that it's not moving around, and then I'm going to really get it on there. Really? Ooh, Malin, what's it called? Is Love Notions a pattern brand? I always think someone's saying I love notions. I mean, we do. <laughs> no, I didn't, Megan. Is that the circle skirt? Because I was looking for whoever was looking for a circle skirt. Because if you sign up on a newsletter, you get a free pattern. I ended up taking the underwear pattern, I think, or it was a bra. It was something like that. I updated all my little timers. Really, Jan? Oh, that's a very high compliment. No fly, they're pull on, basically just one big pocket and two openings. Sabrina Slims. Oh. We haven't done a so long in a long time, you guys. Maybe we need to do a new pull on pant. That'll be our thing. We'll just do pull on pants. <laughs> All right, so let's do the carriers. I'm sorry, the belt loops. Um, I'm gonna think about this. There's so many ways to do these and I kind of want to just serge one edge and do it flat like this, but I could sew it right sides together and turn, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Were you uh, didn't it go to a page where you could pick what you wanted, Megan? I'm sewing this at a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, I'm actually not sure. They may tell you to um, hem the carrier over itself and stitch it down. That is totally great. I like doing that too. This is a really lightweight denim. Um, otherwise, I, I wouldn't attempt this right here. But if you're doing something a little heavier weight, you might not want to have to turn it right side out in a tube like this. I would maybe just edge stitch it like I was kind of playing with the folding. So I think I'm going to be able to help you out there, Megan. That's all I'll say. I, did you guys see I got two new patterns from Hearts? I got the um, uh, Alcott dress by uh, Cashmerette. And I got the, uh, a folkwear pattern, which is really exciting in my opinion. Um, I like folkwear a lot. I haven't sewn one in decades. Um, I think it's called the T Tibetan Wrap Dress. I think uh, I when I first saw it, uh, Christy popped in my mind. I think she'd really like it. I'll show you. It's right here. Yeah, so. So we'll do that soon. I'm, I kind of want to make a men's button down soon like the Fairfield, uh, maybe as a, maybe next week I'll do that. Are you tired of me doing button downs? <laughs> um, for my husband for Valentine's Day or something? I bet Andy will be like, yes, do that. Everyone else will be like, you've done that. I'm just stitching the edges of my Belt loop. I think 
when you do your belt loops in one long strip, it helps keep them a little more consistent in, in width. Um, if I did a bunch of individual ones, mine would be all over the place. And I'd have to turn them in, I'd have to sew so many, you know? So this is great. Um, I see, this is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think I did a little bit extra. Um, so let's say they're 15 inches. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Sunshine Smith. <laughs> Are you that real, Andy? I'm paying attention. <laughs> I sometimes get it wrong, though, trust me. <laughs> uh, so if this is 15 inches and I need five of these, they're three inches in length. So I'm going to cut them all right now. I think I need a new piece of tape here. There we go. All right. And um, those are actually going to go on the waistband. So the way they do it, we're going to put it in the top seam. All right, so let's get our waistband out here. I got this kind of in a mess. Those three go together. These three go together. I kind of want to make sure I have these interfaced correctly. Let's see. So if this one goes to here. It's the shorter one. This is the longer one. Yeah, see, I, I do have this backwards. How's it going? <laughs> Megan, know what? Yes, more button downs. <laughs> Megan's like, no. Megan, I, I'm going to do you a solid soon, I promise. We're going to do those Hudson pants, so. <laughs> See, I, I can tell this is, the, this is the center front right here, and this is the inside, so. I did do that backwards, right? Yeah. It was like this, and then this one goes along the back. Oh well. So these two are gonna go to here, and these two are gonna go here. I'm not gonna fix it. I think it'll be fine. And the way I like to sew my waistband usually is from the inside out. And whoa, whoa there, here we go. Ah, nice, Nancy. Oh, really, Rachel? Oh, that's so cool. I want to see. I don't want to see. Do I follow you on Instagram? There's a few Rachels in here. No more button. You know what? Um, really, Megan? That's a bummer. Can you just do a zigzag stitch instead? I was wondering if there's a machine that only does buttonholes. Okay. Yeah, Rachel. I want to see. That's so cool. Do you have any tips for the Alcott you'll share when it comes time for when I'm doing it? <laughs> they sent a lot of fabric. I was like, oh, heck, there's a lot going on here. This is such a weird angle. The fact that this side seam isn't at the same angle is so weird. I mean, it's, it does have a continuous line, so that's good. Yeah, Terry, that's cool. You have Nancy, and did you find something? Don't, no, I wouldn't use crushed velvet. Yeah, I was thinking, Nancy, like, I, I think really that's what I want. I just want a machine that does buttons, buttonholes. And I might give my machine to my mom if she wants it. 
It's the only thing I use it for, um, except for when I go somewhere else to sew. <laughs> you don't like that idea, Megan? <laughs> All right, so we have our waistband. So let's see, I think that Trying to decide, so I, I accidentally cut my interfacing for my front pieces backwards. So this one has to go on the inside and this is on the outside. All right, so we're gonna do the inside first. Let's put the, do I still have, do I have the notches for the, um, for the buttonhole or the carriers. All right, so there's one right here. I just need this mark. This is the only mark I need. Cause the other is at the side seam usually or just behind it and at the center back. Okay, we're good, we're good. I got it, I got it. All right, so I'm just marking where my belt loops go. I keep saying buttonholes, belt loops. Oh, Megan. <laughs> they were lower, what does that mean? <laughs> like, like, like this? Or like this on your sleeve, on your armhole? I'm thinking if it was a bad thing, it was this. They were like down here. Um, what do I do with these? Okay. Center. Make sure the centers are marked on this. I saw someone um, finish their waistband with a binding edge, which is, I love doing that. I haven't done that. Lowered a first one, okay. Oh, well, I feel like I remember that on one of their patterns that the, the well, the, the armhole, wait, that the shoulder seam wasn't an interesting spot. Uh, maybe it's just how they like to do it. Right, Nancy? Those people are not our friends. <laughs> Just teasing. <laughs> um, okay, wait, this is the inside waistband. I do not want to tag these with this, sorry. I'm a little distracted. The whole like interfacing being on one and not the other is, it's weird. I like the hearts. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, this is the time where I'm gonna have to be really careful about my um, zipper. So I'm actually gonna cut this right now. It is time. So I'm just trimming off this edge here in between the teeth. All right, so I'm going to absolutely under no circumstances zip up my fly right now. I'm gonna start on the inside of the garment this. So I'm just going to hang that off the edge for a second there and then line it up at the side seam first. Try and get all these little threads, especially, you know, like that, like in the side seam. I'm going to open it up, but God, I kind of want to do this. That would make the thickness even, you know. Really, Jan? That's cool. And what, what was new to you? Okay, so I'm putting my right side to the inside of the garment. Um, this way my last seam is on the outside. I say this so much. I know you guys are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyone new here, this is just the way I like to do it. Of course I didn't mark this center. I marked the other center, the other waistband, back waistband. So 
I'm going to mark it. I, I like the, the triangle because it's very obvious. It's also can be really shallow and you still see it. All right. I thought I marked all that, but maybe I lost it when I did the um, interfacing. All right, so let's get all this in the weight, the seam, line up on the seam line. And then here, same here, get all these threads to the seam line. Look at those stitches through her face. They look kind of, they look kind of cool. It looks kind of artistic. All right, and then we want this to hang off our seam allowance. Um, and you don't want this to get stretched out. I think you could use a non-stretch interfacing and it might stabilize your waistband with less stretch. I uh, prefer waistbands that don't stretch at all and other people really like the stretch. So it's just your personal preference. I don't like my waistband giving out over the course of the day, but other people find that if they're sitting a lot, having the stretchiness it makes it more comfortable and they don't mind doing the shimmy shimmy cocoa pop or wearing a belt throughout the day you know all right so i'm just going to sew this and um here's my zipper so hopefully i'm going to remember when i get to it to walk my my needle around it with my hand wheel hand wheel so i'm trying to be really precise about my seam allowance because this is a little area i'm working on getting better at getting my in fact let's Let's look at this right now. I can't zip up my fly. I should have checked this before, but I wanna see if my waistband here lines up when my fly is shut. Because the thing I'm working on is getting my waistband straight across right here when it meets up with itself and the waistband the same width. So that when it meets like this, um, it's perfectly lined up along the waist seam and along the top edge. So, pin waistband on the right side to the rump when it is flipped inside is completely finished and you chop to the waistband. Oh, well, that, isn't that what I do? <laughs> Sherry's rooting for you. <laughs> That's like me typing in any chat. My keyboards don't respond. The ones that come with these computers drives me crazy. All right, so now I'm thinking about my, the zipper teeth there. They are right here, okay. I'm walking with my hand wheel. I'm trying to find a place between the teeth. I don't want to dull my needle or blunt it or anything. And now I'm okay. If you do and you have to change your needle midway, just do it. It'll be fine. You know, I take into using this pin cushion, not the cherry pie, but the cherry pie, I sewed that magnet to the bottom so that it sits right here on this magnet. I need to sew a magnet to that. I like the way the canvas feels on the pin cushion. Oh, you never had done, oh, cool. And you like it? I'm glad you like it that way. Or I'm just glad you like a, that uh, you found a way that appeals to you, you know? I think finding a method that works for the way our skills are best suited, you know? All right, I'm going to put this pin right here so I remember that I have to do the teeth.
there's pitfalls with this method. <laughs> but those are the kind of pitfalls I can deal with better, I guess, than the other kind. This front is sticking up a little bit, so I'm just gonna smooth it out there. All right, here we are at the zipper teeth again. we have the inside waistband. So let's see when I zip it up, if it's even, right here. Well, that's not bad. So I'm just looking right here to see if it meets right here, straight across. It's within like a 16th of an inch, I think. And remember, now isn't the crucial time. It's when I sew the waistband and finish this edge. So that's great. All right. All right. I'm just gonna kind of take a quick gander here. Make sure nothing looks amiss. stretch. This feels super stretchy. Um, it's the only thing I'm kind of a little bit worried about right now. All right, so same thing. I'm going to line this up. And I pressed these seam allowances on the waistband like that. Now I, I should just open this one. Right? No, I'm going to actually push it. Really? I'm glad, Nancy. That's that makes me happy. <laughs> you made one. Oh, it let you pick what you want. Okay. No, I didn't, Louise. Label, label, thank you. I should have already done it. I should have done it right there. <sighs> Will I ever learn? It's funny because in the Chicken Boots video, um, when you're sewing it with me, I tell you, this is where we put the label. <laughs> and one person commented, I really like that she tells me where she put the label because she's obviously thought about where it should go. Um, she's sewn hundreds of them and I do have a cute label I like to use and I just took her advice and I was like, that's right. But when it comes to clothes, do I remember the label? Rarely. What's great about putting it in the center back seam is that you can potentially cover up any messiness there if you had some. What? Messiness? I'm going to look at my seam allowance of my label. I'm going to kind of pull it up a little bit. I don't want to chop the top of my head off, but there's not much seam allowance on my label. Dang it, I thought I got all the threads in there. There we go, there we go, all right. What's that, what's that? Okay. Ooh, it's barely in there. 
I just want to get rid of that thread right here with my blue fingers. Okay. Thanks for the reminder, guys. You see how this is kind of getting um, messy? The side, that's what the uh, out seam and in seam were far worse because it wasn't just the the stretch fiber, it was also the fiber of the jeans and that's why I overlocked it. It was just nicer. We're getting messy, so. Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Oh no. Yeah, what are the late, what are the patterns Liberty's doing? What kinds? Right, Nancy? <laughs> I know, Megan. Oh, that's interesting, Louise. Um, in Twitch chat, you can actually, if the streamer allows it, you can send voice messages. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, you can actually record something and it'll pop up in chat. <laughs> I've been in a few chats that happens and it has scared the heck out of me. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, so we've got our Pull that a little bit there. Now, I oft, often mention that there's a couple ways to do this part right here at the beginning. You can start with this down and sew along the center front and then come across the top, right? Or you can start by folding it up and then do it. Um, if you're wanting that finish where you bind your edge, you need to, to, to bind this edge first. Guy, I really wanna do that. Do you think it's too late to bind this edge, you guys? Do you, would you want that? Um, oh, I can't. It is too late because I did the I did it the reverse. So you would have to sew it the opposite way, where you start from the um, outside of your pants, go to the inside. If you've already bound this edge, then you would just top stitch it down. It's a lot easier to do. Um, it, it's like it's like the easy version. Like I feel like I'm doing the easy version of a clean finished finished waistband. If you don't want to have to deal with sewing on the outside last, like I'm about to, sew from the outside to the inside and then you leave this flat and you just top stitch along the outside. Because this edge is finished, you're good. I explained that so terribly just now and I'll have to do it one day for you guys. So. <laughs> oh, really, Sherry? That's funny. Oh, so maybe they're doing like a soft launch of them to see how they go. All right, so I'm going to turn mine up a little bit and do it. But I'm also going to check right now if it's going to match on the other side. Because this is um, one of my weak areas because it's one of my weak areas it's becoming a really strong area for me because I've really been focusing on trying to get this be do this better so that's good there's an upshot when it's your weak area you know you start like getting obsessed with doing it right so I'm just looking at my waistband being about the same width I think everything looks, it's cut. So as long as my seam allowance is consistent, I'm good. So now I'm sewing my waistband to the pant. I'm going to make it straight up and down so that I get a nice straight edge here. Yeah, so what kind of patterns are they, Louise? Yeah, dresses, blouses, kids' dresses. Oh, really? Hi, Stitchy. How's it going? Huh. Oh, 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 oh. Belt loops. Put your belt loops in where the notches are. Almost forgot. Sorry. 
You want them right side facing out on your waistband. This is the right side of my waistband. It's gonna face to the um, outside of the world. So I want my belt loop to be the right side as well. So if you have a right and a wrong side, so. Huh. That's so weird, they wouldn't know anything. <laughs> I wonder if it was kind of a new thing for the staff too. Like they were like, <laughs> you know. I'm pinning on the wrong side now. I'm gonna fix that. This is my outer waistband. Put my pin in the correct side this time because I'm sewing it from this side right now. Um, and I've actually been lining up the belt loop at the seam line to the to the back, not straddling it. It's just a, a, something I. It's just a way to do it. There's no nothing. I like it a little further back. All right. Now you can put the belt loops in the waist seam and then do your last stitch, like come up and stitch along the edge, top edge of your waistband if you want. <laughs> I am art reading chat. I haven't seen anything new. I saw Louise ask a stitchy sews in Liberty. And then she said that the assistant had didn't know. Maybe I missed a couple things. I am sewing some jeans here just for your information. <laughs> and reading chat. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Oh, so they're not new, new. Me too, Nancy. You know, I feel like um, I'm a little shy about saying how much I like to sew jeans because for some reason I feel like people think it's a bragging thing, but it's not. It's just like certain styles of sewing are your bag, you know? Like me, if you were to say, um, oh, will you, I want you to sew a fancy dress in taffeta with satin and velvet i'd be like do i have to and other people really really jam on that and they really dig it and they're so good at it you know look at cosplay have you ever looked at cosplay sewists man the things they're doing are amazing you know the corseting all the layers of fabric the way they're ma managing all of the layers of garments that they're wearing and how they have to sew them it's truly amazing um, but if you threw jeans at them, some of them would be like, uh, uh you know, so it's just like what you like to do. I like very constructed things with top stitching. I like wovens a lot. I like knits too, but they're not as satisfying for me. I don't know. So, yeah. Eliza, how's it going? <laughs> you know, I, I don't find them hard. I mean, fitting them is one thing. Sewing them is another. Sewing them isn't really that hard. As long as your machine is set up for the right kind of sewing, I really don't think they're that hard. The the button fly, I don't want to get blue ink on my face. The or I mean, the zipper fly, um, I've sewn multiple different zipper flies and I feel like, you know, Besides me, there's a ton of other people in the world that do them too. So there's lots of resources for sewing that. All right, I'm not gonna cut that all the way off quite yet. I'm gonna get rid of my pins and I'm gonna look the best I can to see if my waistband is gonna line up and be the same width. And I know it's gonna be hard because I don't have all that trimmed off, but I'm just gonna do my best and see before I trim the heck out of it. Because if I just lop that corner off, I've done this before. 
If I lop that corner off and this side needs to get taller, I can't. I actually have to remove the waistband and then try and, and I actually have to take, about, take apart both pieces because you can't just raise it up because then this, this the lining up of the waist seam gets off. So it, it's a, you really get yourself into a, backed into a corner if you're not careful. All right, so I'm just gonna try and get this out the best I can. It's pretty lightweight denim and it's stretchy, so it's helpful. And well, let's just see how, how it did. My other weak area is lining up the tack button. Okay, so this one goes underneath and say it's sewn down like that. This one's on top. So you see, look at that, it's, you can tell it's doing some little wingy thing. So let's, let's really look at it. Okay, so I have the seam up here that I have to go by, so let's look at that. And I could press it as well, so. Yeah, right, Liz, I know. The fit is, is a big deal, so. I know, they, people think they're complicated, but like a Project Runway contestant famously says, it's like sewing two sleeves together. <laughs> I think that's a good way to put it. If I just sew these by myself, it takes me like two hours. They're really fast too. It's faster than sewing a lot of projects. As long as it's one I've made before and I don't have to follow anything. All right, I'm just gonna pre pretend like this is all sewn and just see how they look. Cause see like that, do you see this? I hate that. I hate that that is what happens. I get that little wingy waistband back there. Okay, so what if they were on? Would it, if I pull them up like this? So I feel like I gotta taper that waistband a little bit behind. You see what I'm talking about? Can you guys even see that? See that? So. Oh, that's great, Louise. Yeah, exactly, Malin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, encapsulated perfectly. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna taper that side a little bit. My right front, I say it out loud so I don't forget which one it is. So this one right here. Plus it got folded in here. So we'll just straighten that out a little bit. Got all these little threads in here. That's kind of gross. These little fuzzies. I keep finding them. I'll be at home and I find this little, these little fuzz, the little uh, pale ones. <laughs> like, oh, those things are following me everywhere. All right, I'm just gonna straighten that out. Now I'm gonna. Uh, I hate to do it, but. I don't want it poking up, so I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna trim this down. Okay, so now we have our corner. A little bit tapered now.
Yeah, it was Carrie. I promise. Or Karen. Sorry, I was going to call you Carrie. Have I told you that I had a friend named Carrie and she spelled it K-E-R-I? That's why I call you Carrie all the time. The Liber Liberty, apparently, Eliza, Liberty, Liberty has made sewing patterns. And one, one person, Stitchy Sew, says she saw them a few weeks ago. So they're, they've been around. I mean, haven't they had patterns before? Let's just iron this. I'm going to iron this. I'm also going to um, turn the pants like this so I can work on the waist pant on the inside. This is our last stitch. Um, hopefully, except for when we tack down the belt loops. So. so this is the right side of the pant. So I'm just going to do this. Actually, I'm going to press the seam. I'm going to do my, my uh, uh, French seam technique on this waistband. Aren't you guys proud of me? I'm getting so much better about ironing certain things. No time like the present to grind everything in the parking lot. <laughs> Look at my little anvil, isn't it cute? I got this in the needle sharp box when I had did their jean box. It's such a great photo prop. I think I use it more as a photo prop than I use it as an anvil. So I'm just pressing these seams kind of just flat and open. Uh, I think it'll make it a lot crisper. This fabric is so stretchy. I think this will help uh, manage it a little bit. So I'm pressing this, this top seam towards the waistband and the one at the waistline towards the waistband just maybe to set it up a little bit, you know. I do, Sherry. I hate when my iron goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, it's not coming really loudly? Okay, good. You have some tree cutting in your neighborhood going on? That's funny. It's a coincidence. One time someone was using the air compressor, or the generator, right outside my door. And I talked to someone, they were like, that wasn't us. And then I found out it was someone's son washing their car so it was like a pressure washer I was like yeah okay if they're gonna do that they have to wash mine too bye Andy see you next time oh Nancy you know I had a iron in college and um, I don't think it shut off automatically. This was the this was like 1989, and one day I it fell off the ironing board and it was on all day, face down on the carpet, and all it did was burn the carpet. It did not start a fire. I mean that's the one good thing that so much of our interiors are, um, you know, flame resistant, especially in California. There's so many regulations with it. So in a way, there's that other, there's another built-in safety, you know? Can you guys see okay? They don't get to iron in the factory, you guys. 
That's why sometimes I don't do it. <laughs> but I'm trying to. Especially when they're not mine. And I'm not in a factory, right? Okay, I'm going to fussy with that a little bit at the machine. Just want to get this mostly ironed. So much crisper on that edge when I do it like this. Sorry if it's hard to see. I'm trying to get the waistband to lay nice and flat while I pin it or, or while I iron it so that I um, don't get any torquing. Hello, well, I don't know how to say your name. Selchuk Durdu? Durdu? Welcome, welcome. We're sewing jeans today. We're kind of on the home stretch, actually. Almost done. I'm kind of concentrating, so sorry. And uh, we're on the iron cam right now, so you can't see me yet. But we'll be back at the machine in a second. Just sew this down. Then we're gonna put in some hardware. Yay! And then I'm gonna try them on without any of you looking. <laughs> Hi, ah, from Turkey. Welcome. I think you are the first person to comment from Turkey, but people are in here from all over the world. I am in the United States, in California. So what time is it in Turkey? I'm curious. And what do you like to sew? Yeah, they're not perfect, but they're shaping up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. Step by step, right? <laughs> uh, I was just telling the chat that I'm getting better about ironing it when it when it's important, you know, like this right here. It is helping make it look good. This waistband's so interesting that it has seams at all, you know? But it, it has a nice curve. All right. So you can see I kind of like flatten it all out and then I go to the middle and I pin out from the middle. You're hanging in for those rivets, Laura. Laura, if you can't hang on, I totally understand. I, I have done it on a few other pairs of jeans, but yeah, we're gonna do it. I can, I'll do the rivets first for you. You need a little bit of hardware with rivets. You need the, um, you need something to be able to cut the rivet down in um, height with the, where the post, the cut the post down um, because they can't, it can't be too much taller than your fabric, you know? I think that's the trick with rivets. I also pre-punch the hole with an awl. And then my tip is to just pretend like you've made a million of these and you can't go wrong and whack it. I think confidence is the biggest thing when I'm doing that kind of stuff because that it'll make you like hesitate, you know what I mean? Like it makes you hesitate and then you're like, oh no. But if you just pretend like you know what you're doing and convince yourself. All right, so we have our waistband. I didn't really start pinning till over here, so I just wanna go back here and look. Here we go. Nice and flat, nice and flat.
All right, let's do this. <laughs> oh, I always think of that, Nancy. Every time I'm ironing, I always think how much you like that. <laughs> Oh, that would be cool. I would love a map. You guys, oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> You're a student of sewing, Dirty? That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Natural fibers are better. Exactly. I've been sewing a long time. I've been sewing for like 35 years. So, yeah. Uh, Needle Sharp does have a really great sale right now. For any of you in the States, I think they... I don't know if she ships overseas or not, but she has like a really great sale. I've gotten some of my nicest fabrics from her. You like making jackets? We made a few jackets recently. You're going for a 10 hour day. Oh my God. That's a lot. That's a lot. Night, Malin. We'll see you maybe tomorrow. Sleep well. Okay, so I'm gonna start stitching down my waistband, but I'm gonna actually start, um, you know, not at the front. I don't really like stitch starting right here because it puts the back stitch right there. And I don't know, I, w I would rather just not be focused on that. So I'm gonna start it somewhere where maybe the belt loop will show uh, cover up my back stitch, you know? So let's do it right here. Now this fabric is um, really, really stretchy. It is gonna give me a little bit of trouble. So I'm gonna try and keep my jeans nice and flat. I wanna tie the legs in a knot right now because they're all everywhere. So let's see, just nice and flat like this. And I really wanna make sure, because when it's stretchy, sometimes you get this, you get this kind of buckling happening because the presser foot is pushing the fabric towards you and the feed dogs are pulling it, you know, so. <sighs> what sketches? I didn't see sketches. So I'm going to try and manage that little bits here and there. All right. Now we're on the right side of the pants, so I don't really have to worry about where the needle lands on the back. I mean, it's nice, but you know, it's not as important because all of our good stitching is on the right side. I can tell I'm off of the waistband in the back already. So. But like I said, it doesn't matter because we're only gonna see the outside. And if you had bound this edge and it was hanging loose, that bound edge would hang below, but and you know you would you would be right on the waistband and it'd be great. So that's another way to do it. And binding is always such a cute way to finish the inside. All right, so I'm getting close to my front here. And so what I worry about is, I don't know if you guys can see that this waistband's already rolling toward the back here. So I'm actually gonna try and push it a little bit like that and try and tell it that I don't want that. You know what I mean? Awesome, Durdu. Good luck. That's awesome. I'm gonna tuck all that in there and I'm gonna kind of push that seam toward the pant a little bit. That way if my presser foot starts pushing it, it'll line up perfectly, because that's what my machine likes to do. I kind of know that. So I'm just gonna do this. It's non-negotiable, you know? You don't put your belt loops um, at this point either, because the belts are wider than waistband usually. Or, or they're the width of the waistband sometimes. And so you need that little bit to kind of hang below. All right, so now I'm getting to the brass zipper teeth. I'm gonna walk my machine around them. Um, 
one more stitch like that and we're gonna turn. I'm sorry it's so dark. And now you're gonna push your belt loops toward the waistband. Like this. Can you see? Can you guys see? Want me to brighten it? All right, so we got our waistband nice and flat. <laughs> no, your English is great. There's a lot of folks that um, don't speak English as a first language here. You're in good company. You're, I mean, you're speaking more than one language. That's pretty cool. All right, my pants are falling off the back there and it's pulling. You don't want that. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can just go buy all of your um, belt loops without top stitching them down like that. Now I haven't stitched this waistband down because remember I started about right here and I'm gonna come around and meet it. So now I'm getting to my, this is the side of the waistband that actually shows more because the other one, it gets tucked under. So that's kind of nice. You know, you, you have just this one you really have to focus on. I'm going to poke these little seam allowance ends right there. I'm going to poke those in. You can, you can kind of trim those off at an angle if they're really hanging out and they're causing you a problem. I've definitely done that. All right, turn. Make sure that stays in there. I don't want this to peek out. All right. Okay. Now don't catch your belt loops. Catch those in a second. <laughs> right, exactly, Nancy. <laughs> I know. Anytime, a, like a kid makes fun of someone else for not saying the right English word, I'm like, at least they're speaking more than one language. <laughs> I'm like, why are you making fun of them? They're trying. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, poke my my. Uh, belt loops down there. But um, one of the things I like to do is you see all these little fuzzy edges right here? I'm gonna pull those off. You see that? Cause it's just gonna fall off later. So get rid of it, especially with stretched denim. See now it's nice and blue. Get rid of all that stuff. I've just learned this myself. Because when you wash it, they're going to show. Let's try and get rid of it. That's it. Do I check my waistband? Scared to. But might as well, right? Okay, it covers it up pretty good. I think my button and buttonhole will be like that. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's great, Dardu. I heard so many people say that's how they learned English. I had a French boss and same thing. He watched old movies and the news. I'm not Nancy. They didn't give me one, so I figured that's what they wanted. 
So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm gonna do a lot of dishes. Don't worry, that'll be covered. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna stitch down all my belt loops. And we're gonna do our, it's almost time for our hardware, Laura. If you're like in the next room, you know, like reading a book. <laughs> come back soon. All right, so I'm just going to turn it under. You can bar tack these down if you want. Just try and make them all the same length. That's another thing I kind of struggle with. Now, if these were for you and you know the width of your belt, you can custom make these the length that you want, you know? Or you leave them off. Like one of the views of the Deer and Doe is no belt loops. No back pockets, no belt loops. We did it all. But yeah, like if you only use skinny belts, you could have put it in the seam right here. And um, you all you would really have to do is just top stitch it down. Sounds a little weird. Did you hear that? Hi, Mar Marian, how's it going? Thanks for subscribing. Maybe you're not watching. Maybe you're just subscribing. <laughs> I'm saying hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm about to sew through my label, so I'm going to lift it up. Do you like how I thought I, was, and I noticed that? That would have been such a ceramic thing to do. I would have noticed afterward and had to take it out. Yeah. Using my noggin. One more belt loop. Here we go. Nancy, did, do you have a, if you don't mind me asking, cause you came later, I'm curious. Do, do you have notifications on for when I go live? Cause I'm just curious, did you get one or did you get six or did you get none today? Because I, had I had to go live several times, so I'm kind of curious if you guys got a lot of notifications or if you even got any since YouTube wasn't working. I need to figure out what's going on. Is it YouTube or me? Before it was Twitch. Twitch isn't even working now. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, right, Nancy? It's going to come out anyway, those threads. All right, let's check out my jeans. Oh, I have to hem them. That's right. They look, um, they, this denim is pretty classy. It looks very uh, trouserish. That looks so dark on my screen, but I know if I brighten it up, you guys will say it's too bright. And then here's the inside. You know, I missed the waistband, but it looks like I stitched in the ditch. These look really good. This denim is really easy to sew, which is nice. Stay down. Okay. All right, so let's do the hems real quick. Let's see how it looks zipped. Moment of truth. Those look good. I like the details and I like the, the texture of this denim. So, <laughs> Beverly, you did not get a note. You did, you thought you guys got one, one, one. No, uh, you can put them wherever you want, Eliza. You can, some folks do it from the, put their belt loops down, start them here and then finish them up here. Like the opposite of what I did. Um, this one's not sewn well. I'm going to fix that. I'll fix that off camera so we can keep going though. But I'm going to pin that so I don't, for I don't forget to. I couldn't see that. 
Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of ways you could do it. I actually used to be able to do them inside my seam here and here, and I would lay them down, straight down, in the seam, stitch it right here, and then um, put it in the waistband too. So it was kind of tricky. Yeah. You got one for two, YouTube and one for Twitch. You got one. Okay, yeah. That's so weird. Yeah, they turned out pretty cute. Okay, so let's do the, the hems real quick. I did a flat felt seam, so I know which one the inseam is. Get rid of these threads here. Um, I'll trim this a little bit, but I'm not gonna pull on it. It'll just keep going. This stretch thread here, you know? It, they look, uh, the texture of this thread, this puffy thread, looks like a feather. You know, like a bird feather. <laughs> it's everywhere though, my machine's blue. Okay, I'm just gonna double fold. These are not my pants, these are uh, for a fabric store, so hence why I'm not sitting here going, I wonder if these fit first, and I'm gonna hem them afterward. I also didn't really, I didn't make a muslin of these, I didn't try these out, um, and normally if they were for me, you know, you know I would have done that. Darn it, I accidentally cut my thread. Um, I would have made a muslin or, or like a sample or a prototype, fit them to me and then sew them. And then I would have known then also what length to make them. I start on the inseam. My impressive fit's getting caught on that uh, flat felt seam. That's why I'm having trouble there. All right, so I'm just gonna turn this. But these are gonna be a sample in a fabric store, so I don't really need to worry about them fitting me. I did increase the waist two inches in circumference, just in the hopes that I might be able to try these on for folks, so yeah, yeah. I'm not Karen. I was, uh, when I first went live, it worked. Um, but then YouTube wasn't going live. Yeah, I pre-wash everything. So YouTube wasn't going live. So I had to keep restarting the stream. And then um, I'm looking to see which way the seam is pressed. It goes this way, okay. Uh, and now the Twitch wasn't there. It wasn't when I looked, unfortunately. I wrote a message in chat just saying I'm having some trouble, but I don't know if anyone was there yet. I usually only have like, like one or th to three usually people watching on there, um, and then up to about nine the most, so when I'm lucky. So, all right, so let's see. I'm gonna even this out a little bit. Uh, stop going into the fabric. Oh my gosh. By evening out, I mean I'm going to make it worse than it was to begin with. Okay. So let's see. This seam goes this way, like this. And that means it's toward me. All right. It better be. That's how it should be. It should be the opposite of what I just did, right? But... That was my double check, I was really hoping, so. Ah, Karen, that's awesome, that's fine. Yeah, if anyone here has Amazon Prime and you, you know, want, you can connect it to Twitch, which is another live streaming platform, and you can give a streamer who can receive subscriptions on there a free $5, it won't cost you anything, Amazon pays for it. So you can, it's great to utilize it when you think of it. It doesn't automatically renew, so it's kind of a pain. But for a lot of streamers who have like certain emotes and things, it will unlock those emotes. You can also watch things without ads. Um, and you can do, do other little fun things. There's not a whole lot of perks on mine for having it since I'm a really small on Twitch and I don't have any custom emotes on there, but you would get no 
commercial. But it's a nice way to give someone five bucks without it costing you anything. All right. I almost cut my jeans right there. Did you see that? <laughs> okay. Hardware. So I actually don't have a buttonhole done yet. So doing the tack button might be a little iffy. So let's decide where we want our rivets. This is the um, rivet and tack button set. You can buy it at Hearts Fabric. Um, shoot, I can't think of the item number. Um, and they get it from Closet Case. It's a really good, I've used these before, they're great. They always work really great. I'm looking for the two, so, so this one, you see how it has the little ridges on it right there? I don't have autofocus on, so you can't really see it, but this, there will be ones with the ridges and they are for the tack button. So don't use those on your rivet. Okay, so take the ones that have the ridges and your button and set those aside. Just get those out of the way so you don't accidentally use those. They have brass and nickel on these at hearts. All right, so now we have all these. I'm gonna put them in my <laughs> kitty cat here. So I had one stuck to me. So let's see, usually you would put them somewhere like um, here or here. In general, on the back, you usually see it like here. I think they don't really go with the hearts. <laughs> so um, what do you guys think? Let's see. You can do it. I feel like it's usually, I usually put it here. Wait. Where do we put these? I'm getting a tickle. Anyone know? <laughs> or anyone, anyone have opinions? Where would you like these? Yeah, pocket edge, but this has an interesting pocket. <laughs> I'm trying everything. I know, I think skipping the back is a good idea. <coughs> Just one pocket edge, yeah, but, but pocket edge here or here. I feel like it would look okay with two on the front and none on the back. I know, Sydney, right? Where's my all? I think I'm just gonna put two here and two there and none on the back. Maybe if I had nickel, it would look better with the uh, pink hearts, you know? Two in the front and on the back. The upper rivet throws you all the bottom without the top. Yeah, exactly, Karen. Yeah, right, Rachel? I know it's far less than we think. <laughs> they give you a ton. 
One of these packs is enough for two pairs of jeans. So yeah, I think I'll just do them on the front. Maybe here and here. This is a weird pocket. You, oh, two on the back, Georgie? Really? Mm hmm. I don't really. It's kind of this color that doesn't really go with the um, pink. Hi, so Megan. How's it going? Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Exactly. You don't want them on the pocket. You don't want it. Do you want it below here? Do you want it here on the seam allowance? I feel like it's there to stabilize the pocket, right? But putting it back here, because doesn't it usually go on the pocket opening? Here's the side seam. Let me pull it up. This pocket's really different. You see, it's an angle. So you see how it's at a straight angle. It's stitched down right here. It's only open here. And you know, like usually it's a, like a round pocket and you do it on the inside of the side seam, but it's not, this is a separate welt. So it's a little different. Maybe if I did it right below and right here. I actually don't know where to put these. I'm gonna look at the instructions and see if they have them. Where are the instructions? Seam allowance? But then they'd be on the back. There's none on the Instagram pockets, shoot. If I put them here, see, I like the way that looks, putting it here, and it's through the seam allowance, which is great. But then what you have, yeah, you'd have, you'd have a rivet on the back of your jeans, just floating right there. You know? Can I brighten that up for you guys? Yeah, on the welt band, exactly. I mean, like, that's kind of, but then the pocket opening gets really small. See? It's a very small pocket. What if we just put it right here? Like, let's see if there's any on the instructions. No. But Laura needs a tutorial. <laughs> I know, I feel like skipping it too. Or maybe just right here. That just seems weird on the welt. They're more like uh, trousers. No, it wouldn't so, Megan. Look. Yeah, right, Eliza? Yeah, I think I might have to do one on scrap fabric, Laura. <laughs> just put one. <laughs> I'll just put it like right, like a little dimple on the butt. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just uh, do it on some scrap. This is why we have scrap fabric. <laughs> I know, Laura, right? <laughs> okay, so this is how you're gonna put your rivets in. Um, I'll put a few layers of fabric there. I'm gonna do, uh, 
two, four, five layers of fabric right there, okay? So um, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna poke a hole. I'm gonna stitch a box actually around this just to stable it all, stabilize it all. All right, so you need to poke a hole where you want your rivet. And remember, like, if you're positioning your rivet somewhere, remember that um, where the hole is is in the middle of the rivet. So if you want your rivet here, you know, if you want your rivet right there, you're gonna put your hole like right here, right? So just remember where the hole is in relation. Don't put like, oh, I want my rivet here, and then and then it's like straddling the seam, you know what I mean? So um, just make sure you kind of think about it's where the center of the rivet is, right? Okay, so you're gonna pre-drill a little hole like this, and now put in one of the tacks and just look at it, okay? You might have to really get this hole going, especially because my all my layers here are really loose because they're not like in a seam. So get that hole going. Now stick your tack through. And now see how much is sticking up, okay? All right, now take your rivet and just lay it next to it. And you see how that point is sticking up a little bit more. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut that off. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm going to take off the little tip. Okay. Now you have your little trimmed rivet. It's If you have spare ones of these, I totally recommend trying this out. You know? Yeah, it is, Louise. <laughs> Did I go through that one too? Okay. So, um... Now you're gonna put your rivet through again on the back side, okay? You don't have to have removed it. You could have just done this and left it in there, right? All right, and so now you have your rivet. Where's my stuff? I guess I'll, I'll try and use the awl. I mean the anvil. So you wanna put your, that little post on the rivet like that. Put the rivet face down. And now just sit here for a second and like pull your fabric like this, like kind of stretch it out so everything is nice and flat. Keep that rivet nice and straight across and then you're gonna whack, right? And now you wanna check it. Now, see, that's a little bit high up off the fabric. I'm gonna try and whack it again. I wanna see how much it would take for it to poke through. We don't want it to poke through. See, like, that's much better. I have a little bit down there, but that's pretty good. That's nice and flush with the fabric. So that is, that's how you're gonna put in the rivet. So the key is to Pre-drill the hole with your awl, right? Do a nice, good, look at how hot, far my awl is in there. So a nice big hole. And then put your rivet in there. Lay the, um, or that's the post. Then lay your rivet cap next to it and see how much is poking above your rivet cap. Cut that off with, um, I have these little wire cutters. The, this post is really easy to cut with these. It's very soft, so don't worry about that. And then you're gonna put your rivet on top once you've cut it. Put it face down, get it all nice and level. Like make sure the rivet, you don't wanna do the, you don't wanna whack it on the rivet because you might hurt it with your hammer. Um, and then you want uh, this nice and level. And when you hit it, Try and go straight up and down. Don't do this angle like this. Yeah, I did, Louise. You bent the top piece. <laughs> no one will notice. You can kind of gently maybe finesse the other sides to bend a little bit or, you know, pick it up with um, not wire cutters, but pick it up with um, 
your like needle nose and kind of maybe straighten it a little bit. Or stick the awl under there like this. Laura, go like this and try and lift it up like that. See if that helps. <laughs> we'll get you through this. Yeah, I think I put the hardware on a few times on stream, but there's nothing like being able to like do it together. Um, for the tack button, when you do that, you don't need to trim it at all. Just, but do the whole thing of like, make sure that you're, you're nice and flat. Make sure everything, you know, the post and the cap is down on the table or whatever. I only have this so that I don't hurt my sewing machine table. I wouldn't normally do this on my sewing machine table. Um, and so just make sure if you're, if someone out there is doing their tack button, you don't trim the post on it. You don't need to, you won't, you won't have any trouble with it. I've done a thousands of these because one of our products had it. Um, so put your post, your cap down, your button, uh, then put your fabric, you know, like this is going through the hole like this. This one has ridges. So make sure you push the fabric all the way down and it's sticking all the way up. And then you take this and you position it onto the post. I mean, the cap, sorry. And then this one is a little wiggly. So keep all of your fabric nice and flat, just stretch it out. Make sure this is as parallel to the table surface as possible. Same thing, hit it straight up and down, confidently. Night Louise, hasta mañana iguana. So if anyone's doing a tack button out there, that's how you do that. See, it already wants to grab on there. Oh no, it's grabbed onto the fabric, so. And just remember the, in this kit, the one with the ridges is the one with the, that goes to the tack button. And it's easy to tell because um, you'll have, they'll be different and um, the ones that, are, that you have the most of go with the rivets, just match them up, so. All right, so, sorry guys that I <laughs> didn't need the rivets after all that. <laughs> we decided they don't really go. But um, I'm pretty excited with how these turned out. They turned out really great. The Deer and Doe Saffron Jeans. Thanks to Hard's Fabric for giving us this project. They're really cute. I hope they're not here. I hope this is a nice surprise for them. They're going to see it on Instagram, but you know, <laughs> it'll be cute. I'll put the buttonhole on today. I'm going to try and get these in the mail right away to them so they have them for Valentine's Day. So, all right, you guys. So uh, tomorrow we're going to make a dog coat pattern for Loki. My little mischief maker, he is a three ring surface, all, um, all on his own. I will so Megan, I have to fix this right here. I didn't get that tucked under there, so I just don't wanna forget. It's so, they're so dark, it's hard to see. Um, and I think I'll make the fabric from scraps using a quilting technique that's kind of fun. So, I should say a piecing technique. So, my name is Sarah Me. It's like um, Jeremy with an S, if you're familiar with that name. My name's unique in, in my country. Right, so Megan? Exactly. <laughs> so um, thanks for coming, you guys. And if uh, you're around tomorrow, stop in. It should be fun. I'll be at the pattern table making the pattern. And I'm going to try it on Loki and see if there's anything else I can do. I think I'm gonna maybe put a pocket on there so he can carry his own things too. Yeah, S-A-R-E-M-Y. But yeah, I don't care how you spell it. I'm over that, so. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Hasta mañana, iguanas. Oh, it's almost two o'clock, wow. So, I'll see you soon. Sorry that I had trouble going live today, so just hang in with me tomorrow if that happens again. So, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Oh, this is a wrong thumbnail, by the way. This is part two. It didn't, I don't know why it got rid of my thumbnail, but it's the wrong one. So bye guys.